From the writing team behind Deadpool. What? Must be here in 39 minutes. We won't survive re entry. But it could. Good night. Noises everywhere. Hey there guys, how are you? It's me, the Canadian Movie Buff, with a review of Life. So as I mentioned before, screenplay writers Red Freese and Paul Wernick flip genres and do a straight up horror movie, still starring Ryan Reynolds. Along for the ride are Jake Gyllenhaal and Rebecca Ferguson, who you might recognize from Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. What happens is that there's these six astronauts on the International Space Station, they just received a capsule containing samples from the surface of Mars, and they discover that there's a living thing in there that feeds off other life forms. And now they have to either kill the creature or at the very least keep it from getting to Earth. It's interesting to see a duo known for the comedy to do something completely different. I like how recent Wernick are sort of going outside their comfort zone and sort of testing the field. But this scientific experiment was not a complete success. For some weird reason or another, I kinda like the idea that there was a really small cast. It gives us more time to focus on each person and properly develop the characters, making us feel connected to these astronauts. Jake Gyllenhaal plays a former army pilot who's about to break the record for the longest time in space, and we get a feasible idea for why he's up there for so long. Ryan Reynolds is, of course, the joker of the group who makes light of just about everything. Rebecca Ferguson is the no-nonsense, work-focused, I-take-my-job-seriously quarantine officer. She has to make sure that if anything bad happens, it gets shut down quick. Between the three of them, it's Gyllenhaal that we want to spend the most time with. His military service has given him a bit of a cynical view on humanity, so he figures, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. IIS, here I come. Later on when it just hits the fan and this jellyfish creature starts creeping around, the tone of the movie just skyrockets. Where is it hiding? Who is it going to kill next? Will they keep it from wrecking havoc down on Earth? It's truly a race against time as this thing keeps getting bigger with each victim. So imagine how big it must be after, say, a hundred people. Suddenly, an Xenomorph doesn't sound so bad. Now while I applaud the Deadpool team for trying something new, I have to say it wasn't very compelling. Sure, it was creepy, the very idea that this thing was running around in a space that you're trapped in, but it didn't feel as if too much was done to make it stand out amongst other scary movies where an alien wipes out an entire crew. Not to mention the acting felt bland. Ryan Reynolds has previously worked with the writers and the director, yet he doesn't have a lot of material or that fire he had in Deadpool. Jake Gyllenhaal is a great actor, in fact I think he's been neglected of an Oscar for quite a while now. However, this performance is not going to win him a statue as it had very little energy unless the alien was on screen. It was this weird pattern where it's like, Yeah, it's nice I guess, uh, the view is great, that's great. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, Earth sucks. I like being in space. <laughs> Rebecca Ferguson does an okay job, but again, it's dull and not very appealing. So the acting and the writing is so good, what about the cinematography? All space movies have great cinematography. It's steady for the most part, but it only stood out when there was shaky cam and there was a lot of cutting back and forth, and my eyes hurt just trying to follow along. It's a shame that a horror movie with the same writer's budget and star of a great comedy was unable to deliver. The concept was neat, the special effects were cool, but the writing was weak and the cinematography was either generic or headache inducing. Also, the characters never really got any proper backstories other than Gyllenhaal's. When looking back on life, it's a pretty standard sci-fi thriller that won't be remembered. I did like the twist at the end, but that wasn't enough to cover up the flaws of this movie. I'm just hoping it wasn't a setup for a sequel. Because... It ain't happening. It's an alright movie at best, and probably best worth seeing if it's at the cheap seats. Alright, that's my review of Life. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Are you looking forward to Alien Covenant? Leave your answer by commenting down below. And as always, this is the Canadian Movie Buff saying I hope you had a fantastic weekend at the movies. See ya! And if you want more sci-fi, then click the link down in the description where I talk about the Season 3 premiere of Rick and Morty.